good TMG fam, it's your boy L with another reaction video, man. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute, man. Listen, we back. Salute to uh, Wanna See Entertainment, man. We back with another one of these animated horror stories, bro. All right. So this is 12 horror stories animated compilation for January of 2020. All right. We're going to get into it, man. I hope you guys ain't watching it that night. I'm lying. I'm lying. I do. I do like the fact that it'd be scaring people. I, I must admit. I got to admit. I hope you're watching it in the dark by yourself, and uh, I hope it like swoops you out a little bit. It's the purpose of it, man. Have some fun, all right? We're watching it together. That's what we're doing. We're watching it together. Let's check it out. Here we go. I was 20 at the time when this happened. I still remember this as a vivid memory in my brain that would never get erased. One day, I was at a club with a few friends. I saw a cute girl, which was totally my type at first glance. Okay. She had blonde hair and deep brown eyes. Her nose was tiny and cute. Her lips were red like a rose. I approached- She almost sound creepy how he was able to describe her, right? Maybe it's just me. Sure, and I asked if she wanted a drink or something. She said, yeah, and we drank a lot. She told me to come by her place. I hesitated at first, but soon I agreed. I told lie number one. We never hesitate. If a woman invites us, we go. We never hesitate, which is which is our own fault. That's how men can always get caught up. We can always get we can get set up or robbed easily by a woman just telling us to come to our house. My friends that I was leaving early and we booked a cab. We got in the cab and 15 minutes later. We arrived at her house. Her apartment had a two floor, nothing special, but just normal. We stepped inside and all of a sudden, I smelled something rotten. I got a bit nauseous and asked her if I could use the bathroom. She smiled and said yes. I rushed in and as I did, the smell got stronger. That's where the smell was coming from. At first, I didn't pay attention and puked into the sink. I thought that I had drunk a bit too much, but it was not. Just then, I heard a splash of water right beside the bathtub. I turned and opened a shower curtain, and then what I saw made my heart drop. A dead body of a boy around my age, mutilated, was lying in the bathtub obliquely. As I got closer, I realized that his right leg was cut off, too. I was freaked out. I wanted to scream, but it didn't come out. But I decided not to go outside, because she might be a psychopath killer and could kill me, too. I tried to find an escape. Then I spotted something that I wasn't expecting. A small pocket knife stuck out from his jean pocket. I cautiously took the knife and flicked the door open. There was no one outside, and only that girl was sitting on the steps. I asked her what was in the bathtub, and suddenly, her expression got different. She flashed a maniac grin, and then she took out something from her back. A knife. All of a sudden, she lunged toward me, but I dodged it. I took out my knife and swung around as soon as she came to me and kicked her. She let out a scream as she fell to the ground. I heard some noise upstairs, but I wasn't going to check that out. I sprinted out the door and ran two blocks straight without stopping, and then called the cops. The cops searched the whole house and arrested three people, all charged for murdering innocent young boys. Then I... Woo! Gotta be careful who you go home with. Oh my God! He was only hoping for a nightcap. He almost got <laughs> mutilated, fam. Dang. Like, man, he was supposed to knock her out. <laughs> like, she came running me at a knife, pushed her over, and got up out of there. He did exactly what I would have done, except he took a little too long. I would have been out of there. I wouldn't have waited to find a knife. No, you a chick. You're not getting this off. I'm gone. I took a cab back to my house. I called and told my parents about this incident. I wasn't able to sleep that night at all. 
This was the scariest I've ever experienced. And who knew what would have happened if I didn't find that knife? Heck nah, bro. Heck nah. Y'all be careful out there in them nightclubs. Careful who you pick up and try to take home. Mom used to work as a taxi driver, and she started to go out with one of her coworkers. Let's call him Larry for the sake of the story. He seemed like a nice guy at first. Finally, they got married and had a daughter, and we will call her Ruby. But once they got married, things started to change immediately. He was not a nice guy after all. If something didn't go his way, he always ran to his mom's house. Because in her mind, he was still her baby, even though he was a 50-year-old man. He was such a mama's boy. Mom and Larry would break up and make up a lot. So that was just normal behavior. But when he got drunk, sometimes we didn't let him inside the house as he can become a violent person. He'd break in by smashing a window to get in on occasion. Well, he would not hurt us, but broke things like a TV or a family member's computer, which made us terrified. The final straw was when he came into our house one day. He kidnapped Ruby and ran away for two days until the police arrested him and brought Ruby back home, even though Larry was her dad. Mom was literally traumatized by this incident. We decided to move out of our house, and it was a great idea to move away from him at a safe distance. We had none of his belongings. That's scary, especially when it's the father of your child, you know what I mean? And you're looking at your child because they don't understand what's going on, so all they know is that daddy's not around. It's hard, bro. It's hard. But she made the right decision, though. So he had no reason to come crawling back to us. So we moved out, and as time went by, we settled into the new house. We all started school, and I always woke up extra early to shower and play video games before I went to school. But this one day, when I woke up at 4 a.m. and finished taking a shower, I came out of the bathroom and looked out of the window unintentionally. It was still dark, and there was a man who was walking up and down the path by the side of our house. Suddenly, he looked up and stared at me. He realized that I saw him. I stood there and did nothing. Then he walked away and stood under the streetlight. It was Larry. He had the most malevolent smile I've ever seen. He came over to the mailbox saying that he was sorry. He said that he wanted to talk to my mom so they could start over again. Sign of a psychopath. Don't do it. No. I ran to mom and woke her up. But we decided to call the police instead of letting him inside. Smart. About 10 minutes later, the police came to arrest him. They found out that he drove a car while drunk and left it halfway up the road. And when they searched him, he had a surgical scalpel in his pocket. He told the police that it was just a joke. But no one believed him. So it was just a joke, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you got a scalpel in your pocket, huh? That's a joke. It, it being sharp, pointy, and able to puncture somebody or damage someone some kind of way. That's a joke, huh? Man. When I was a kid, I was really into paranormal things, such as ghosts and spirits, so I always got really excited for Halloween. On one Halloween, my parents took me and my brother to a ghost tour in the city. During the tour, we would visit real haunted houses, which were said to have some really violent ghosts. I couldn't be more excited. We arrived at the location for the... I, I resonate with what she's saying, man. I, I used my college days I missed like going to like the haunted forest or a haunted house, man, with a group of people. <sighs> Talk about some fun. Tour meetup, an empty parking lot. But we were a bit early and nobody else had arrived yet. 
It was a chilly October night, so my parents decided that we should find a building to wait in until more people arrive. We walked over to the building that the parking lot was meant for, an old hotel, and entered the vestibule. We tried to fully enter the building, but we found that the doors leading to the lobby inside were locked. After a few minutes of standing around, I started to feel strange. A nauseous feeling had swept my stomach. Goosebumps ran up and down my arms, and a piercing feeling of being watched was stabbing, almost burning my back. Looking around, it was obvious that me and my family were the only ones inside the vestibule. The lobby of the building was also devoid of people. Once we saw people enter the parking lot, we left, and I felt better. And after that, I was shocked to see the first place we stopped on the tour was the building my family had been waiting in. Now, this building we won't enter, because the spirit inside here is more violent than the others will encounter. The guide stated, In here, we have the Shadow Man. He doesn't terrorize the whole building, just the area that you enter through. He's been known to slap and scratch people coming inside. A few pictures were passed around. All of a sudden, I don't know how and why, but I recognized that an inky black figure stood against the door's windows. Its eyes were glowing white, and it had long fingers and pointed nails. I'm not buying that. I, somebody on the tour probably set that up to do that. You know what I mean? Like, that's what my thought process would be. Like, come on, fam. You think... Seriously, stop playing with me. It was freaky to think that I might have been targeted by the Shadow Man, but I didn't think much of it until after the tour when my family went back home. I started to complain to my mom that my back was itching and burning, so she grabbed some ointment and told me she would look at it. We thought it was just a bug bite. We had been walking around outside at night after all. When she lifted my shirt, she asked when I had scratched my back. I told her I hadn't. She took a picture on her phone and showed it to me. I was met with a long red scratch leading from my shoulder to the middle of my back. The skin on my back was a shade of red, like a rash. She got the corona. She got that rona. Rona virus, corona. She got that rona. Me and all of my family couldn't say anything, but just turned back straight to our house. The shadow man had got me. You got something, all right. <laughs> something. This is not about my ah! story, but someone from my church, and he wanted to share his experience with anyone else. He's a 32-year-old man, and his pseudo name is Mark. He's a fairly big guy. And this situation took place when he was on his way home from work. He said that he had lost his phone one week before this whole situation happened. So he couldn't call and get any help during this story. It was quite late, around 11 p.m. He had finished work and was walking to a taxi stop location. And when he got there, a few people were standing around waiting as well. After about two minutes, he noticed that there was a minivan approaching. Usually minivans are cheaper than taxis, and he felt tired that day, so he decided to take the minivan. He sat on a seat, and there was a young boy seated in the passenger side next to the driver who was collecting the fare. And then two other boys who looked like teenagers also boarded the minivan and sat in the seats in front of him. Once the minivan took off after about five minutes, the boy asked if they would like to drink some Coke. The boys accepted and started drinking. And they also gave it to Mark. Mark was also feeling thirsty, so he took it, but only a sip. Wait, what? Who does that? We just, I don't know y'all, so we just about to pass around this coat? Nah, we not rolling like that, fam. I don't know y'all, I don't know y'all what y'all got. Hey, that's this, nah. No. Not much later, he started feeling drowsy. Uh, of course. Just before he about laid his head on the seat beside him, he noticed that those two boys were already knocked out. 
After he laid his head down, he heard noises coming from the back seats. Two people were talking in a different language. The car was passing a big signboard that showed Crest Chicken Farm. And then he finally passed out. When he got up, he found himself inside a big shed-like barn, and there were some tools on a big table. He was on the floor, and the other two teenage boys were laying next to him. He still felt a bit drowsy, but he managed to get himself up as he was looking for an escape. He saw that the two boys were still passed out, so he tried waking them, but they wouldn't budge. As Mark was kind of a big man, he tried to see if he could carry one of them, but it was hard to do because even Mark was having a hard time to stand properly. And then, he heard voices. He took a peek from the door and three people were walking toward the big shed, coming from a house on the hill, which was quite close to the shed. Mark panicked and tried to look for another exit. He was looking around the place, and he found one at the end of the shed, luckily. He approached quietly and escaped as fast as he could. At this point, his vision was all blurry, but he managed to find a fence door and unlocked it. He heard the people shouting, but he ignored. He just kept on running. When he finally reached his house, it was early morning, around 5 a.m. His wife was up all night waiting for him and ran out the front door as soon as she saw him. He collapsed and slept for almost the whole day. When he woke up and finally got a chance to explain to his wife what had transpired that night, he remembered about the other two boys who were still there. Then he contacted the police immediately. He told the police about the road signs and a big billboard for Crest Chicken Farm and other things that he could remember. About two weeks after, there was a police report about how they found two teenage boys' bodies in a lake and advised that when they examined the bodies, all their organs were missing. Oh! Oh! I was thinking that in the back of my mind. I was like, yo, these dudes could probably be selling their organs on black market or something like that. I was thinking that, but I was like, yo, I was too busy concerned to see if he was going to make it out or not. You know what I mean? Hey. I, it's, it, and it sucks for the other two people. I get it, but you gotta try to save yourself first. He attempted to save them, you know what I mean? But after he couldn't, then he saved himself. And ultimately, he was the only survivor. That's crazy. Mark just stood in fear. And as the event was too traumatic for him, Mark had to quit a job for a while. This happened when it was our school's camping day. All the grades went to each other's places and our teacher had taken the six students to this large site that was quite cheap. It started off all right. I got a room with some of my friends at the time and my closer friends were in the next room. The first incident started when I was the only one in my room still packing mine and the other people's stuff away. I was on the bottom bunk letting my mate take the top. When I looked up was some sentence, and it said, Hello, you are going next, with a creepy smile. On the second day, we all went outside. There were teepee tents next to a field. I hung out in one with one of my friends. Some others hung out in a second tent, but in the third tent, I saw a shadow with a knife. I told the teacher and another student who went in, but didn't come out. Oh! But nobody believed me, and there was nobody inside the tent. I thought something was really weird. On the third day, three of my roommates were out on a day trip with some others, which I was going to do the next day. I had done a mud course, and after that, I decided to have a shower. The water was black and disgusting which added to this horrible week. All of a sudden, when I was still in the shower booth, the doorknob was shaking. I screamed, and when I got out, I saw a handwriting, you won't leave alive, on the wall. <laughs> you want to bet? I saw a shadow. I've been like, hey, you want to bet? You want to bet? In the window. My room's door was locked while I was having a shower, so no one could enter in our room. 
The fourth day, I was taking a walk someplace that no one knew. And then I found a huge knife and blood-soaked clothes. Bro, the warning signs were there. That's what we got to start practice on. Taking the heed to the warning signs, fam. Taking heed. Stop always feeling like, ah, oh, this don't apply to us or it, it won't happen to us. Yes, it will. I just hoped that this stupid and terrible camp would finish soon. Then the last night, I woke up in the middle of the night because I saw the same shadow leaving my room. And there was a knife on the floor again. I couldn't sleep the rest of that night. The last day, I was left to clean the room and set the beds for the students, whoever would use it next. When I was about to finish, I saw the door and it said, you are lucky you survived. I didn't have enough time, but next, I will not let you go. I panicked, so I ran from that creepy room. I told my teacher, however, by the time we got back, it was gone. As I got onto the bus, I looked in the window of that room, and the shadow stared back at me, with a decapitated head in one hand, and in the other hand, the same knife I had seen twice. Later, when I came back from the camp, I heard about that place. It was an orphanage and a mental institution that had many mysterious deaths. So what's weird is about this, like, what happened to the other kids, or did he kill anybody while he, like, this is, this isn't making any sense to me right now. I got a ton of questions. To this day, I wonder ah! what would have happened if I'd spent longer than five days at that place. You died. This happened pretty recent, about three weeks ago. Myself and three friends were hanging out at a shopping center one evening. We were messing around posting clips on TikTok. Then one of my friends started laughing. Now, I you gotta love when it's a group of females, but they decide to use a male voice to narrate it. <laughs> you gotta love it. After what she was laughing at, she told me that guy behind us kept staring at me. When I turned around, it was some older guy just watching me. He had black sunglasses, a cap, an old Adidas tracksuit with scuffed up shoes, and had a disgusting looking beard. My friends thought it was hilarious, but I found it really weird. Then another one of my friends said, she thinks that guy lives on her street, about a few houses down from her. Oh. She said that he actually follows her on TikTok. At that point, I quickly got my phone out to check if he was following me, and he was. I had to block him because he seemed a bit creepy. We went to get McDonald's before we went home, and I received a message on TikTok from someone. Wait a minute. Since when uh, McDonald's come with a menu, with the the sit down at the table menu? Nah, fam. You better you better read this menu off the wall. Y'all be being too fancy right now. It was that guy who had been following us. His name was Greg, and he wrote. Why did you block me? With two emojis. One was a crying face, and the other one was an angry face. He had actually created another account that day in the shopping center. I blocked that account as well, hoping that would be the end of it. I didn't mention it to my friends this time, knowing they would just laugh. That night, I was up late and had Netflix on in the background as I was chatting with my friends on Facebook while scrolling through TikTok. I got up to use the bathroom, and when I returned, I had three messages from my friends, all saying the same thing. All were things like, who's in your room? And what's up with your last post? I asked them what they were talking about, and they told me to check my TikTok, so I did. It was a clip of my bedroom. It was a clip of someone picking up my phone and recording the inside of my room. At that point, I heard creaking. Oh, heck nah, fam. In the house? Oh, he too disrespectful at this point, bro. He gotta die. He gotta die. Then I heard a man's voice say, Sorry. Please don't scream. 
and turned to see my closet door slightly open. I started to scream when the same guy who had been following us burst out of my closet and tried to cover my mouth. Thank God I screamed and it was enough for my parents to hear. They came upstairs and my dad tackled the guy to the floor. The police were called and he was arrested. We were informed that the guy had straight up admitted to stalking and breaking and entering. One of my friends pointed out, if I go back and look at the post on TikTok from when we were in the shopping center, you can see Greg is in almost all of those pictures. So That's crazy. And he lucky. You know why? Because he lucky he was still alive when the police got there, bro. He is lucky. We're in the background. I haven't heard what's going to happen to Greg yet. Man. I just hope he won't ever come near us again. Yeah, he lucky. He's super lucky. It happened about six months ago. I was in a scouting group, and at the end of the semester with the last group meeting, we always did something special. But this time was a little different. Instead of going indoor climbing, our scout leaders decided to go canoeing. I was really excited about it because I had never canoed before. As always with every trip, we should have to be an hour earlier as we were riding our bikes to the destination. I noticed something. It was a creepy looking old man staring at us with an almost psychopathic like grin on his face. His clothes looked old and dirty. But I shook it off thinking that even if the guy was some kind of creep, it still wouldn't matter because we were with the group. As we arrived at our what that mean nowadays? Our destination, the guy from the canoe company told us how to row and that we had to choose our buddy to canoe with. I chose my friend Noah that we've been friends since elementary. We got to go first, and it was sort of a race, so we were happy to go first. But within 10 minutes, we got passed by my little brother and his friend. It went pretty normal after that. We saw this guy in the middle of the stream in a boat, just fishing and sipping a beer. Ten minutes after, I saw the same guy I saw on the way here. He was just standing on the ground next to the stream with that same awful grin on his face. I thought of it as being a cliche, as this always happens in the movies. Oh my gosh, how many warning signs are you gonna are not gonna take heed to? Like you done seen this dude multiple times, and every time you look, he's staring right at you with busted clothes on. Y'all get on my nerves. Noah also said, ah, it's probably just a coincidence. He said, this place is a popular camping place, especially at this time of the year. To be honest, he wasn't that scary that time. He might just be an old crazy man trying to scare some of the kids. So I just canoed on and half an hour later, we were at the end. I got wet, so I grabbed a towel and we went back to the meeting place. After that, I was going home alone, riding my bike. And I saw that same old guy in a car with another man who was sitting back seat. And they started slowing down. And the man asked me, Hey kid, looks like you need a ride. The man behind the wheel said nothing. And I tried to say it as polite as possible. Oh, no, thanks. I'm almost home anyway. As I looked at the man again, and I noticed fury and madness in his eyes, which I didn't know why. I just got scared. So I pedaled my bike out of fear of being kidnapped. But the pedal. car started chasing me, and they blocked the road. It was around 9 p.m. in a suburban neighborhood. Nobody was out on the street. As that guy opened the door, he jumped out and pushed me aside from my bike. I saw him with a gun in his hand. Then he finally knocked me out unconscious. I don't remember how many hours passed. However, I could hear the sirens dimly. Two police officers saw this car was speeding, so they were chasing it. I also heard gunshots, which made me so scared. And then they shouted, shots fired, shots fired. Two minutes later, lucky they ain't fire shots into the trunk. 
or some stray bullets went to the trunk. The gunshot stopped and the trunk where I was, was open. It was a police officer. He took me out and told me, it's safe now, don't worry. Later, an ambulance arrived soon so I could go to the hospital and met my parents there. Now six months passed, but I still think about what if the police officers didn't see them and they took me to the place where they were heading. It almost make you not want to let your kids outside, don't it? Like you want to just hold on and not let them go. When I was nine, my father had died. I didn't know how and why. I was just sad about it. I soon got over it and would just look at the pictures I had of him. After some time had passed, I constantly saw him. Whenever I saw him, I told my mom, Daddy's home, Mommy. Daddy's back from his long trip. Well, she thought those were recurring dreams and maybe a sign that I wasn't handling his death well. Whenever I told her, she would just take me and my sister out to get some ice cream. I soon stopped telling her, because after we moved across the city where I lived, which is Reno, Nevada, I still saw him sometimes in my sixth grade class. One time, when my best friend and I were working during math class, I saw my dad sitting beside me. Then I whispered to my friend that my dad was right next to me and that he constantly followed me around. But he was different from how I remembered. <laughs> you about to earn your way. <laughs> you about to earn yourself into a one-way ticket into a whole different school by yourself. That's what you, like a, a, a crazy alternative school is where you going. Keep it up. Because there was always a bullet hole on the left side of his forehead near his hairline. In the seventh grade, he still followed me around and always frowned every time he saw my stepdad either hitting me or screaming at me. My stepdad was kind of tough, so he did that to me sometimes. Whenever my stepdad would enter the room, he got mad at him. I heard my dad gently one time in a dream tell me that he had killed himself because of my mom. He said that my mom cheated on him and always yelled at him saying he wasn't good at being a father. Over the summer between ninth and 10th grade, <laughs> Shout out to Wanna See Entertainment. They gonna call the school Wanna See School. <laughs> I was in summer school taking the second semester of Algebra 1. I was sitting at the front by the door when all of a sudden, something outside caught my attention. My dad was staring in through the window of the door. His eyes were empty. I was horrified being watched by him. He came into the room and sat at the empty desk next to me. And I knew that he was not the same. I felt something was going wrong. I've grown up now, but I still see him a lot. And he's always whispering in my ear and telling me that my mom is the one who should have died. Not him. I would just go on, uh, online and uh, on the record and say uh, she's certifiably crazy. Super crazy. Crazy, crazy. Like, batch crazy. Like, yeah, all of that. My name is Jude, and I'm 27 years old. Hi, Jude. I've always loved going camping ever since I was a young boy. Some of my earliest memories were of me sitting around the fire with mom, dad, and grandfathers, singing songs and telling stories. Whenever we told stories, we always ended the night on a scary story, right before going to bed. And my grandfather's stories were always the best. His descriptions gave me chills as he described vivid characters and monsters from his imagination. I always loved to hear his stories, but once when I was 10 years old, something happened that scares me to this day. One cool autumn day, my parents decided to take me camping with my grandfather, as we always did around that time of year. We arrived at the campsite around six o'clock, and on the way in, I saw that the campsite we were driving into was different than the one we usually camped at. The entrance to the campground seemed old, 
and a lichen-covered stone sign with the name of the grounds greeted us as we drove in. We arrived and set up our tents. After eating dinner and cleaning up, we sat around the campfire as usual to tell our stories. I can't remember all of the stories told, except for the last, my grandfather's story. I remember the smell of the burning wood and burnt orange sunlight casting long shadows off into the trees behind us as he began to tell his tale. He started by saying that it was a true story from his childhood. Eh. Don't believe that. Anybody hit you with a true story? Nine times out of ten, they lying. Sometimes I don't know. Nah, I don't know. I'm just. I just made that that assessment. Just right now. Just made that up. And he had waited to tell it to me until I was old enough. Now this grabbed my attention. As usually, my grandfather told fake stories and never about himself. I was right. He said that he had been camping at the same campsite we were staying at when his story occurred. He started by saying the campground had been built back in the 1930s by CCC workers during the Great Depression, which, looking back, explained the oldness of the park. But at the time, as a kid, I really didn't care. He said that one night, around 1960-something, while camping with his father, he was fishing at the lake down at the end of the long hiking trail that led back to the campground. His dad told him it was time to leave, and they started off down the trail. As he was walking, he began to feel a strange sensation, as if he was being followed. He turned back, but supposedly saw nothing several times. He kept walking until he said he was stopped by a long, eerie moan rippling out from behind the trees. He described it as sounding like a ghost or a person being slowly injured. He and his dad stopped in their tracks. His dad apparently tried to tell him it was a coyote, but my grandfather knew better. He told me it wasn't a coyote. He believed it was something else, something more sinister. Nevertheless, after this encounter, he... Now y'all see why I don't go camping? Nah, man. Nah. Not rolling. And he made it seem like a coyote. Oh, it's just a coyote. No, fam. It's not just that. Returned back to the campsite with his dad and never saw or heard anything else. He claimed that this was true. And obviously, he wouldn't be telling this to us if he hadn't been affected by it. But to me, it seems silly. Scared by a noise? Come on. Anyway, about two days later, I was walking back to the site with my grandfather from a long day of hiking and picking wild berries in the nearby forest. Both of us were carrying heavy baskets full of berries to bring home. The sun was setting and I noticed the long shadows peering out from behind the trees. As it began to grow darker, dead darker, the trail seemed to grow longer and longer. I began to feel a nope. weird sensation in my stomach, like I was being watched. Nope. After about five minutes, the feeling began to grow, and I looked at my grandfather. He looked right back at me with the same fearful eyes. I was in shock. Did he feel the same feeling? Then I remembered his story about the way he felt the night he heard the noise. I began to walk faster, and so did my grandfather without saying a word. After about 20 minutes, it was completely dark and our arms ached for carrying the berries up the trail. Right as I turned a corner, I heard a long eerie moan. My heart stopped as I froze in fear. My grandfather looked at me and said, it's time to go. With that, we began- You late, Grandpa and wailing swiftly down the trail as fast as we could without dropping our berries. Just as I began to relax, I heard it again. Only this time, it was much louder. It sounded like someone being murdered. It was terrifying. It came from directly behind us, and I felt a burning sensation in the back of my head. Don't turn I around. dared not look back. Don't turn around. I sat in fear, wondering of what could have made the noise. When suddenly I heard my grandfather scream, Run! 
I whipped my head around, and in the dark, foggy light, I squinted, and I saw a tall, slender black shadow dart between the trees about a hundred feet behind us on the trail. I instantly dropped my bucket and ran like the wind down the trail as fast as I could. My grandfather was behind me. I became worried about him as he was an old man, and I was afraid he might hurt himself running down the rocky trail. But I didn't stop, nor did he until we reached the campsite. That night, I sat in my tent, heart racing, thinking about what could have made that noise. After we came back home... It might have been Grandpa. Grandpa might have been trying to <laughs> trying to scare him up or something like that. I don't know. I ain't rolling, man. Grandpa, ain't nothing gonna follow you for that many years. Did it to Grandpa when he was young? Come on now. We never, never returned to the old campsite. And to this day, that experience still haunts me. That was Grandpa. Grandpa did that. My name is Danny. Danny! Last year, I entered the high school as a freshman. One day while I was in PE class, the coach allowed us to get water one at a time, and I was the first student to go. I rushed inside one of the buildings from the courtyard to find the nearest water fountain. Since the building was pretty old, the only two fountains on the first floor were unusable due to rusty pipes. The only option was to go down into the unused basement, knowing that no one was allowed. I was nervous since none of the electricity was working, as it's only used during the summer. So much dumb stuff he just stated right there. I kind of want to fast forward past this one, because we, we kind of know what you're... Yo, just not smart, man. However, I forced myself and made my way down using the hallway light upstairs to guide me to the fountain. As I was drinking water, someone grabbed my shoulder abruptly. He was a tall man to be in his early 30s with a police badge. He said seriously, I was ordered to take you, boy. Your school is in danger right now. Just then, he started to pull me. In my 14-year-old head, I believed I was going to be saved from this school danger. He pulled me through the back door to a black van. But all of a sudden, I felt uncomfortable in my stomach. So I told him that I wanted to use the restroom. I came inside to the restroom and he said that he was going to wait outside the door. The bathroom was stinky. While I was using the restroom, thinking in a hurry to finish, I asked him about what's going on or where is everybody else and so on. But he didn't answer at all. When I came out, the man was gone. Then I heard the back door slam. I turned around and there was that man. The guy had a knife and he pointed at me across the scarcely visible hall. I was terrified. I screamed and started to run. He also started sprinting toward me at an alarming rate. And then I felt burning on my back and finally blacked out. When I woke up again to unbearable pain, I noticed that I was in the hospital and my parents, big brother, and the principal were standing beside me. Apparently, I was stabbed in the back twice. The principal said there was an announcement that someone invaded the school over the intercom. However, I wasn't able to hear it since the speakers didn't work because there was no electricity down there. Fortunately, the cops were able to break the wooden basement door down so they could catch that guy. If that door held up for only a little while longer, I wouldn't be here today. He could have done much worse. To this day, I always thank God that I'm alive. Just, I don't even know why we had to subject ourselves to listen to that one. He knew better. When I was in my last year of college, I started going to frat parties more often. I remember where they would have the frat parties at. It was at some creepy abandoned lake. There was one cabin around the lake and it was- What this sounded like y'all. <laughs> Camp Crystal Lake, right? Jason. Big enough for parties. And that night, 
me and my friend Kai were walking to the lake for the party. When we got there, I saw a beautiful young girl. She had blonde hair with pretty blue eyes. Kai noticed that I was staring at her, and of course, he made a dumb joke. I told him to shut up, and he chuckled. And then he said, go talk to her, dude. I refused at first, but after five minutes, Kai convinced me to go over to her. So I finally went for it. I walked up to her and I said, hey, are you new around here? She then said, yeah, it's my first year of college, and smiled. Then she told me that her name was Jamie. We started talking and about one hour later, we decided to go into the woods. As soon as we were far enough away from the party, she looked at me and we started kissing. Well, to tell the truth, it was the best moment ever of my life. After about 20 minutes of making out, she said, let's go back to the party. But after walking for five miles, I heard something. Five miles? <laughs> Five miles? My son, like, what type of a midnight stroll was that? And suddenly, I realized that Jamie was with me no more. She oh. was gone while I was not paying attention to her. I called her name, but there was no answer. Then I heard a strange sound again on my left side. I went to investigate, and I froze in fear. It was a man in his late 50s tied up to a tree. He had tape on his mouth and he was beaten up badly. So I untied him, took the tape off and I asked him, are you okay, sir? The man said he was okay and I asked again, who did this to him? And his answer terrified me. He replied that it was the girl with blonde hair, with blue eyes. As soon as he said it, I heard rustling noises coming from behind me. I turned around. Jamie was there, and she had an ax in her hand. She was smiling again, but now it became madness. I tried talking to Jamie and told her to put the ax down, but she didn't listen. She threw the ax right at me. Luckily, the ax missed me and hit a log beside me. I had no choice at all. I tackled her to the ground and screamed for help. Kai and two other dudes came to me in a hurry and helped to restrain her. I was pissed and also shocked. I asked her, why did she attack that man? She laughed and told me, what's the problem? You don't have to worry about it, or something like that. I told Kai to watch her while I called the cops. Then the cops showed up within minutes. The party was canceled and everyone had to go back to campus. I still think what would have happened if I didn't pay attention to the sounds and just kept walking to the party. I hope Jamie never finds me again. A few years ago, more like 10 years ago, <laughs> I used to be big into visiting weird websites. I had a lot of time on my hand due to not playing sports, nor did I volunteer for anything at all in high school. I told my friend Mark that I was starting to get bored. Honestly, I was bored with what I was experiencing on these websites. He said I should go on the deep web. He and I used to go on the deep web, but never found anything. So I decided to search through some more stuff, a little deeper. I searched for hours every day for about two and a half months. Still nothing that I hadn't seen already. I told Mark, and of course he said, just visit the dark web. When I did go on the dark web, I saw chat rooms, all with different names. I came across one named I, as in E-Y-E. -E. It was all in caps. I entered the chat, but before entering the live chat, you are assigned a number. Mine was P34. I confirmed my number and entered. There were hundreds of people. The comments were coming in quick. At first, I didn't understand what was going on. The screen was black, then a name popped up on the screen that said Mr. Wiggles. The comments immediately stopped and the voice came over my speakers. Welcome P34. Then his name disappeared off of the screen and the comments continued, everyone giving me welcomes. Mr. Wiggles? 
Mr. Wiggles. Okay. A few minutes go by. Then a countdown from 10 pops up on the screen. Then the chat goes crazy. Once it reached the number one, the screen went straight to what looks like a view from a camera just watching someone what looks like at their home. I sat there watching this for 20 minutes and nothing happened so I shut down my computer. The next day I went to school, had a normal day, went to Walmart then I went home. I decided to go back on the same chat from before. I confirmed my number P34 and again, there were hundreds of people commenting. Mr. Wiggles popped up and just like before, the comments stopped. Across the screen it said, no new members tonight. Then the countdown started again. Everyone in the chat, he about to be at your house. He about to be at your house. Started going wild. The countdown finished and then it was showing the point of view from a camera again but it was outside of a school. My school from earlier that day. At that point, I was intrigued. I couldn't tell if it was focused on a certain person or just watching the school. After 30 minutes of watching the video, our school bell rang and everyone started to come outside while whoever was recording. <laughs> I, I ain't leaving school today. Not today. Everything was positioned across the street in the car. Once everyone came out, the person got out of the car and started to follow a crowd of kids. Everyone started to split from each other. Then the person recording started to follow someone. It was my friend, Mark. He had to be at least 100 feet behind him. I started to call Mark, but he didn't answer. I kept calling him as I watched the video, but nothing. The person followed him to his house and sat outside of his house for a few minutes. The man behind the camera finally said, no parents are home. And he began to walk to Mark's house, rang the doorbell, and waited as he continued to record. So why don't you call Mark and alert him? A few seconds go by, and Mark opened the door. He looked confused and the guy said, P34 sent me. Then Mark looked afraid that the camera shut off and everyone in the chat left. So I did too. I called Mark's house phone instead of his cell phone and his mother answered. I asked for Mark and she said that she thought he was with me. I panicked. I then received a notification on my phone from my Gmail account. They said the sender was Mr. Wiggles. The message was, I'm getting closer P34. Mark says hi. I was shocked and didn't know what to do, so I called the cops. They didn't do anything about it because the email disappeared. I haven't been on the dark web since and no one has seen Mark. Still to this day, I receive messages with pictures of me in random places along with the same written message that said, it can happen anytime. I honestly wish I never went on the dark web. Fam, listen. He should have did something. Maybe Mark would have been still alive, bro. And I, why he ain't alerted the authorities about the constant stuff he receiving, man? Some of this stuff be, be ticking me off. I can't even lie to you. This stuff be ticking me off, man. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all think. This was a long one, most definitely. Let me know if y'all like the long ones, short ones, or in between. And, uh... Hey, I'm trying to trying to be there for you in your time of need, man. It's your boy L. To the next reaction of my piece. Y'all stay solid. Hey.